Hello and welcome to Maker Hacks. So today what we're going to cover is the BitQ Cossel Plus Delta Printer. So we got the BitQ Cossel Plus printer. It is a decent printer. I liked it. However, this is a printer that is not for beginners. It is not a printer for somebody who's put together one printer. It is the kind of printer that would be the fourth or fifth kind of printer. Um, I think the best way to describe this is, is they say that it's a kit. It's not a kit. It is a bag of parts that you need to put together. The instructions are done very poorly and they're worded even worse so you kind of stuck to your own methods so if you've built one before then it's not that big of a deal but if you're starting from scratch it gets very confusing very fast when i got this the packaging looked really good nice and clean it's well packaged it all looked great problems that i had were is that once it was opened is on the inside there was damage to the original BL touch that was there. I don't know how it was broken, the box was in perfect shape. BQ could do really well for themselves by doing an IKEA-like instruction manual, by doing something like just pictures, avoid words altogether, um, top-down pictures of what the board, uh, the electronics board should look like when everything is plugged in and that sort of thing. The other thing is, is that they don't cover things like how to do a manual level and how to set everything up so that it is tuned properly. They're basically counting on you, depending on the BL touch uh, sensor, to work these sorts of things out for you. And it's not that great. So you generally want to tune something like this in. And once you've got it tuned in, the BL touch is basically useless. Mechanically, this is a very sound printer, minus one, very critical thing is the carriage that holds the hot end has a cutout for the hot end to fit up into and it is too deep and it allows the hot end to wobble that is probably the worst thing that could happen on a delta so why that is i have no idea i ended up shimming it up with some aluminum foil tape that i had and it works fine after that but this is the kind of thing that if you don't know what you're looking for and you're a beginner and you put this thing together it will cause you nightmares like you have no idea. So in that sense, it was a pretty big fail, but mechanically the rest of it, the linear rails, the way it's cut, everything is decent. Did I mention the instructions were poorly worded? The frontage side of the bottom vertex is the top. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> Guide rail top, reliable. <laughs> Reliable near upper limit block below. Tighten the screw. Ensure nut rotates 90 degree, 90 DHS. It, I don't know. If, if you can't translate something properly, then don't translate it. Pictures only. Now, the display on this is actually decent looking. But when you plug the USB in, it doesn't work. It doesn't allow your computer to control the printer while it's on and it's extremely frustrating there are some firmware updates that should fix this i've yet to have it work so basically i've just disconnected it i very rarely use it unless i'm going to be printing with a sd card which very rarely happens so in this case pretty display but basically useless either replace it or figure out the firmware so that you can plug in a usb through a computer and work on it without having to disconnect the display or even worry about the firmware update on it. The drivers included in this are, um, they're good. They're quiet, again, but there's a major, major issue. They are a knockoff of the silent step stick. Now the silent step stick has the main chip on the underside of the board and then there's the some foil or some heat sinks that pull the heat to the top, which is where you attach um, a heat sink, like the little aluminum jobby. Well, they painted over this. They, not the heat sink itself, but they painted over the pad that the heat sink should be sitting on. So it can't conduct the heat properly, and these things are notorious for overheating, especially at the V-Ref that these guys want it to be at. So these things overheat. 
mine overheated, it lost steps. It was a complete nightmare at the very beginning for me to figure out what was wrong with it. Eventually, I just took my own driver boards, ones that aren't the silent ones, and everything works tickety-boo. It's brilliant, it's really nice. Now I'm gonna have to get some new stepper drivers to find out if I can actually get this to work. But this also brings up another question is, if these stepper driver boards overheat, are known to overheat, then why place it underneath the heated bed? It's a very bad location for these things. So I'd recommend that you move the control board outside from out underneath the printer. So again, it's a decent printer. It's got all the parts that you need and a whole bunch of spare parts. It actually works really well, but it's not a kit. It's a bag of parts. A really nice bag of parts, but a bag of parts nonetheless. So if you're an experienced person with printers, maybe give it a go. If you're an experienced person with Delta printers, absolutely give it a go. If you're a new person trying 3D printing, this is not the machine for you. So that's all I got for you today. You guys have a great night.